Welcome to Tuesday, July 4, 2019. I am Michael J. Burns, and this is God's Healing Word. But we're talking about today, not healing for our bodies, not healing for our minds, but healing for our nation. And uh, we're going to talk about Bible answers to America's challenges today. So happy 4th of July. I know uh, my neighbor just told me a little while ago that it's son independence for him. Well, if he's an American, it's for him and for everybody, praise God. And uh, whether people are availing themselves to this or not is a whole nother issue, praise God. Anyway, I'm excited about today. I'm going to be sharing with you again Bible answers to America's challenges in Jesus' name. Listen to Phil Driscoll as he finishes this. Bill Driscoll blowing that trumpet, the Star Spangled Banner, which we've already played. It's, a, it's repeating itself, and so we're going to just uh, move on here into the broadcast today. And uh, I want to have a word of prayer with you. Hey, listen, you can visit our website at mjbministries.org. 
And uh, if you'll go there, you can find a lot of free stuff that we have available to you. Here, even on this 4th of July, some great resources that we have. And I want to just remind you today, because it is God's healing word, that if you go to M if you email me at mjbcgf at gmail.com, uh, you can absolutely uh, have the exact uh, same thing that uh, the Word of God says we can have. Praise God forevermore. Amen. these by sending me your email to my email mjbcgf at gmail.com and then you can absolutely get these these are free and I'll send them right to you by email as a PDF file you'll absolutely love these in Jesus name amen praise the Lord forevermore <laughs> glory to God forever when the Lord is good his mercy endures forever and we thank God today for that. Praise God. Now, today what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to be sharing with you. Let me just clear up the camera here issue. There you go. Uh, we're going to be actually sharing with you today uh, an article I wrote in uh, the July 1st e-newsletter, which just went out about four days ago. And I don't know if, if, if you've read it at all or not, but this is a very powerful thing the Lord gave me. And I'm going to share it with you. It'll be on the screen. You can read line by line along with me. I have some beautiful patriotic music playing in the background. And I know you're going to absolutely love this here today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, today, as American citizens, today we just join our hearts together in praying for our nation. We pray for the president all the way down to the local officials here in our government. We're asking you, Father, today that you would have your way in our nation, that you would awaken the hearts and the minds of the people who lead this nation politically speaking. We pray for those in ministry, in spiritual service of this nation, that, Father God, you would stir their hearts to be hungry for more than uh, they're hungry for even now, it appears. We're praying for a great sweeping awakening in the nation of the United States, we're praying for revival in this churches, Father God. We're praying for all of our government officials that they'll be filled with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of counsel, that they'll be filled with the spirit of God. We claim them all for the kingdom of God, their full salvation and deliverance, and we thank you for working in each of their hearts and lives. And so today, as we share this great truth that you've dropped into my heart, I pray, Father God, that each person's ear will listen, their minds will be open, their hearts will be receptive, Father God, and that you'll think through my mind and speak through my lips to these, your precious people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. So this is going to be a bit challenging today, but I want you to be a part of this with me as we get into the great teaching from the Word of God on Bible answers to America's challenges. Praise God forevermore. Now, let me start, and you can follow along with me on the screen. Let me start off by saying this to you, uh, that this article is not going to be political. So important you understand that. My, uh, With that said, I'm going to be pointing out some of the symptoms that are presently in existence in the United States and what we as the church can do about it. Uh, my wife shared uh, with me recently a story that she saw online. Uh, in this real-life story, one of those social uh, experiment tests were being conducted. The test included several women who were uh, touched up by makeup artists in a room with no mirrors. These professional makeup artists put various facial imperfections or scars on the faces of these women. The test was to show that even beautiful women who had such imperfections on their faces would be looked down upon by those they came into contact with. Just before being let loose, and uh, let me just say this here, uh, we're going to the next slide here, and as I said, this will be a little uh, difficult, but just before being let loose to begin the test individually, 
the makeup artist wanted to do one final touch up, up on them. Unbeknownst to this woman, the makeup artist removed the scars and the perfections that they had originally put on them. These women then went out to begin this social experiment with what they still thought were scars on their faces, uh, though they had been uh, removed. Uh, now, the results were shocking, to say the least. Each of these women returned with the same result, one that only existed in their minds. They reported that they had indeed been treated differently uh, because of the so-called scarring that they thought was still on their faces. Amazing. Now, our minds have a way of playing tricks on us. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, that Satan would attempt to take advantage of us, but Paul also revealed that we are not ignorant of his devices or mind games. If you do not think that these type of uh, mind games exist in people and our nation, then you have either not lived very long or you are simply uneducated in the things that are going on in our country presently. About 64% of Americans call themselves Christians today. Now that might sound like a lot, but 50 years ago, that number was 90%, according to a 2020 Pew Research Center study. That same survey said the Christian majority in the U.S. may disappear by 2070. Since prayer was taken out of public schools in the early 1960s and the legalization of abortion in the 1973 decision of Roe versus Wade, where there have been tragically, there have tragically been 63 million 459,781 legal, legal abortions in the United States as of 2021. Just to take a note here, this is 2023, so obviously that number is even higher. Now, there's been a steady decline in people's interest in God and church. Thank God the Roe v. Wade decision has been overturned and left up to the individual states. Unfortunately, the truth remains that you can legislate morality, but you cannot uh, make people abide by it. Can I get an amen from somebody? Now, when God created man, he gave him a free will to choose. The reality is that God did not create robots that would be programmed to do what he says. God wanted people to volitionally worship, honor, and serve him. The truth about the power of choice is that once you exercise the power of your choices, you then become servant to those choices. Now, people today are serving the choices they made in the yesteryears of their lives. It is true uh, in their education, careers, marriages, and really in every area. People are extremely disappointed with their life situations, but it is translated to a genuine anger at God and His church. Now think about this right now. The reason this anger at God and His church, or the reason for this anger at God and His church, is that these people have been taught that God is in control of their lives. And nothing that happens in their lives is without God's permission and approval. This is the result of biblical illiteracy and churches that do not teach the rightly divided Word of God. These are the main factors 
for this confusion and anger directed at God. I'm going to say something that some may have a difficulty with. God is not in control of everything. Hear me out. Somewhere in the world today, someone was murdered, raped, robbed, assaulted, injured, or killed by a drunk driver. Was God in control of that? Assuredly not. There are many other things that God is not permitting and that God is not commissioning. Look at the scripture here from Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 16. Uh, actually, verse th uh, verse 16 through 19. There are six evils God truly hates, and a seventh that is an abomination to him. Putting others down while considering yourself superior, spreading lives and rumors, spilling of blood, the blood of the innocent, plotting evil in your heart toward another, gloating over what's plainly wrong and spouting lies and false testimony and stirring up strife, strife between friends. These are entirely despicable to God from the Passion Translation. We know, this is important to say this here, we know according to John 10.10 10, that the devil is the thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Satan is the one behind every known evil in the world. He brought the temptation that caused man to be separated from God, thus causing man to die spiritually and then physically. Satan is responsible for most, if not all, the natural disasters that occur in this world like hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, floods, drought, and famine. We are living in the fulfillment of Romans chapter 8, verse 22, where the earth is groaning as well because of original sin. Yet Satan attempts to get us to believe that he really does not exist. Why? If people are deceived into believing that he does not exist, then the only one left to blame is God. Thus people are angry. They are not just angry at God, but those who represent him in the earth, such as Christians, but especially those of us, in the ministry, and that includes the local church. In over 42 years of ministry, I have seemingly heard the many ill-informed questions people are asking. Questions like, why is there so much suffering in the world? Why does God allow sickness and disease? Why doesn't God help the poor and impoverished of the world? Why does God tolerate evil people and let them live and enjoy the riches of this life in spite of how they obtain them. Why did God allow my loved one to die so young? These kinds of questions are indications that the people who ask them do not know God, his nature, or his word, the Bible. That ignorance has seemingly justified their decisions to engage in what Satan himself has offered to them as a type of placebo that provides them a false sense of happiness. In some strange way, they feel as though they are rubbing their sinful lifestyle in God's face because of a perceived and wrong belief that God has let them down. Years ago, I foolishly engaged in a debate about homosexuality online. 
Of course, I was taking a righteous stand on God's word that people were not born gay, but that it was a part of the sin nature or fallen nature of man. The reason I say it was foolish was because the individual I was debating with online insisted that there was no such thing as the nature of sin in mankind. Now, we have all heard of the seven deadly sins. They include lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. Now, the Apostle Paul, let me move on here. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul dealt with our BC life and reminds us of those who are standing outside of what Christ Jesus redeemed them from in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. He went on to say this, Do you not know that the unrighteous will, un will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortionists will not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Can I get any men from somebody here today? Praise God. Now, despite the sins that Paul describes here that will keep people out of heaven and God's best for them, there is still hope. Why? Because the people that Paul is writing used to be like those who will not inherit God's kingdom. But Paul indicates that they are changed and that they are different now. Praise God forevermore. Later, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 to 11, about the things we should learn from the lives of the Israelites after they came out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, but still failed to enter the land of promise. These same practices, so prevalent in the modern day church, need to be addressed. Beginning in verse number six, notice what Paul says here. Now, these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters, idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality. Amen. As some of them did, and in one day 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Notice in verse number 11 here, it goes on to say, And now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Notice that statement here. Paul talks about it here. He says this, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. It is just as true today as it was in the day of the Apostle Paul penned these words. I've already mentioned the secularization of schools and students, along with the legalization of abortion and the 63 plus million aborted unborn. Yet this downward spiral, spiral continues in our day. Listen, with an estimated population 
between 3.8% and 7.1%, the LGP the LGBTQ plus community still fights to be recognized by society, Hollywood, and even in sports. Gay Pride Day was held at the Los Angeles Dodgers Stadium prior to one of their games. There were more people outside protesting than there were fans inside the stadium. In recent months, we have seen the TV media give credence to the transgender community, as small as it is, being less than 1% of the U.S. population. With Gay Pride Month held in June, listen, with Gay Pride Month held in June, the last number of years, stores like Target, Kohl's, and even the famed uh, beer company Bud Light have lost billions of dollars because there is a remnant of people who are saying enough is enough. Even in Canada, the National Hockey League has taken a stand against having, against having anything to do with LGBTQ plus or the transgender gender agenda. They have learned that if you go woke, you will go broke. I personally have been outraged at the images being shown on television of transgender people having drag queen fashion shows with little children being exposed to what generations before us would have never believed would come to the United States. Drag queens also reading to young children in schools with the obvious attempt of indoctrinating them for future generations and making the abnormal look normal. Just speaking out about such things puts me in the spotlight to be called a bigot, homophobe, or someone who is simply not adjusted with the changing times. They might say that my beliefs are old-fashioned or out of touch. One thing I know is that the God of the Bible that we serve never changes in the slightest bit. Can I get an amen from somebody? Now, all of these things I have shared are the result, listen to this, they are the result of the church at large not fulfilling the Great Commission. We're expecting the lost to come to us instead of us going out to get them. We need the supernatural to once again be given place in our church services. Miracles and healings are like a dinner bell. Listen to me. They're like a dinner bell that will cause people to turn from this outward world to the beauty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, we have the answer for those who are angry at God due to a basic misunderstanding of who God is and his plan for their lives. People, listen to me, people by their anger toward God and their choices to live as they please have complicated their lives in ways that seem irreversible to them. In their minds, it is as though God does not exist, or if he does exist, then he does not love them any longer. Let me tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. In my pastoral ministry, I met people who were lost in the homosexual and lesbian lifestyle. I met a woman who was living together with another woman. They went to a sperm bank and each got pregnant and had a child. One of our church family met one of these lesbian women and began to show her the love of God. She began to watch Joyce Meyer and the Holy Spirit continued to make her question her current choices. She came to meet me for counseling 
but said that she could, that she loved her lesbian lover's daughter and just could not leave. Complicated for sure. A dear pastor friend told me that one, on one particular Sunday service, he had preached and had given an altar call. Several people came forward to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Afterwards, he began to talk with what he thought was a woman who had answered the altar call, only to find out that this woman was a man who had surgery to change his gender to that of a woman. This person confided in my pastor friend that since receiving Jesus Christ as Lord, that he knew he was not a woman, but a man. Since he had the surgery, he had complicated his life in such a way that he didn't know how to live with the physical changes he had made. Now, our country wants to focus on our children with gender dysphoria and telling parents that they need to accept their child's confused state of mind and allow them to transition. Otherwise, they will have to face the real possibility that their child will commit suicide. California is attempting to pass legislation, legislation I should say, that if a child is suffering what they term, with what they term gender dysphoria, and the parents do not seek their state's approved treatment, then they will take custody of that child and release the parent from their parental guardianship. So, what is the solution to these seemingly mountain of evidences or these issues? Let me say to you today, my friend, that I believe that it is simple. We must continue as a church to preach and teach the uncompromising word of God. We must teach the love of God, the grace of God, and faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like the title of Pastor Kenneth W. Higgins' book, The Prison Doors Are Open, What Are You Still Doing Inside? Amen? Now, in conclusion, there is a spiritual freedom that has been bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating of the Lord Jesus Christ. We as the believing church need to tell them about it with supernatural evidence. All will be well in the light of anyone who will say yes to Jesus because there are only two kinds of people in this world, those who are saved and have Jesus in their hearts and those who are about to be. Amen. Now, I'm excited to be able to share with you some of these great truths that I've given you right now. And I'm telling you what, the Word of God is true. And we can depend upon it in these days because we're living in an unprecedented time of temptation, of sin, it seems. Uh, but the Bible says where sin does abound, the grace of God does much more abound. And this is something that we, as people of God, need to really, truly believe. I hope that what I shared today on this July 4th with you, this article from my newsletter that we sent out from MJB Ministries on the 1st just a few days ago, has spoken to your hearts. Let the people of America arise. Let the church in America arise, praise God. And let's deal spiritually with the word of God and with our witness and our testimonies and not being shy and quiet about it. There's a cultural war going on, but it's even more than a cultural war. 
It is a spiritual war that Jesus has already won. We as the church are to be the police, spiritually speaking, sharing the truth of this gospel everywhere we go with people everywhere. And so I hope that these words have spoken to you today. Listen, we thank God for you. We praise God for you. And we love you so very, very much. We're going to close the broadcast today. And we pray that the word of God has done its job here today on this 4th of July. I love you. I'm Pastor Michael J. Burns from mjbministries.org. Visit our website and we believe you'll be blessed as you do. You have a wonderful celebration in Jesus' name.